we've been here. So it's good to be back. And as we uh, begin our our Bible study, we're going to be going into the book of Acts chapter 27 and 28. And we'll finish up our study on the book of Acts. And it uh, seems like this year is going by so quickly. It's already December. And uh, in a few more days or 25 more days or 24 more days, we'll, have, we'll celebrate Christmas and then New Year's. So uh, the, the year has gone by so quickly and uh, we're still here. So praise God. Before we begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we are so honored, so grateful, so privileged, Lord, to come before you. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with us as we bring our, we begin our Bible study tonight, Lord, as, as we study the book of Acts, as we uh, study the life of Paul and, and, and what happens to him and, and uh, the things, the events that occur back then, but also the things that uh, we are experiencing today, Father. And it's only by your grace, by your mercy, Father God, that we're able to stand before you and proclaim you as King of kings, Lord of lords. And God, I pray, Lord, that our hearts are open, our minds are ready to receive the word of God. And Lord, that we consecrate ourselves to studying you, to be, to be more uh, in, in, this, in unison with your spirit, Father God. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you be with me as I bring the study tonight, Lord, and bless those who are watching in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, last time we met, we went through the 27th chapter of, of Acts. And uh, so we're going to, uh, there's some things that I want to bring out, uh, out of uh, the last part of Acts, and then going into the book of, uh, or chapter 20, 28. And the first thing that we saw in the uh, in Acts 27 is that uh, here we have the Apostle Paul who was set sail to Rome. He was, uh, he was there to uh, go and see uh, the Roman Emperor Caesar. He was going there to, to see him and to stand trial before him. Uh, he was with 276 other people including himself. They were prisoners like him. Roman soldiers, and then the people that worked on the ship. Uh, and so they departed, and uh, the storm uh, was uh, began. And we can relate to this storm to our lives, the storms that come in our lives. In verse 13 of chapter 27, it reads, When a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought they had obtained what they wanted. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. And so it's just like us, we think that, oh, this is what we want. We get in ourselves in a situation that we don't realize that what we are into or what we are doing or our circumstances is going to lead to, to disaster. And so they set sail, they, they, uh, they went along the shore of Crete. In verse 14 it says, before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeasterner swept down from the island. And so now here comes a storm, and it blew down, and now they were in trouble. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. It was going against the wind. And so here we have a ship that was in trouble. The ship, uh, uh, so they gave, uh, gave way to it, and they were driven along. They could not fight the wind, the storm, and they gave in to it. They were at the mercy of the storm. Now relate that to your life, and sometimes when storms come and there's nothing you can do about it, you basically are so, okay, wherever this leads me, that's where I'm going to be. And so this is what happened here. And so uh, this ship is what you described. It was, it was going through a monstrous storm, almost like a perfect storm if you've seen that, that movie. Uh, those on board were unable to eat. Because of the waves, uh, they were getting sick, and uh, they, they threw up so much that they were that they threw everything overboard, uh, all the all everything they had in order to lighten the load of the ship. Uh, in verse eighteen, it says, "We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard." And verse nineteen, on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle, all the furnishings and everything else. 
Then, the, when neither the sun or stars appeared for many days, the storm continued raging. We finally gave up all hope of being saved. They give up on themselves. Now relate that to your life. You try to fix the problem, the circumstance, the trial, whatever it might be, and there's no fixing. Nothing you do is going to work. And so they just gave up. And sometimes we give up on ourselves. Uh, Paul comes along, and he's their only hope. They gave up hope, but Paul had God. In verse 21, he says, After the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up and before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. He told them prior that not to go there. And so he says, But, in 22, But now I urge you uh, to keep up your courage. Don't lose hope. Keep up your courage. Don't be afraid. And he's telling them this. And why would he tell them this? Well, he says in 23, Last night an angel of the God, who I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you, you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground uh, uh, on some island. So he told the men, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid. An angel of God, whom I serve, came to me and told me, do not pray, be afraid. You must stand trial before Caesar. And so he believed that. He had faith that he was going to be saved, along with all the other men that were with him. And so this is the hope that God gave Paul, but not only to him, but all those who were with him. The same way when we run in trouble, say uh, whatever it might be, God might speak to you and say, don't worry, I have, have faith in me, trust in me, and you'll be saved, along with your family, along with your friends. And those situations that, that you, you grab hold of, uh, those moments of, of what you want, is say, oh, I want, sa I want a Savior, I want to be uh, uh, saved from this trial. God will be there for you. Amen? But it continues. Verse 27. Now on the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea, when about midnight, those sailors sensed that they were approaching land. And so now, on the fourth, two weeks, they're out there sailing still. Don't be afraid. Keep your courage. What happens is that now they begin to notice that land is closer and closer. As it continued, uh, making a longer story shorter, uh, some tried to run away. They said, don't run away. Don't go overboard and get those life uh, uh, boats because if you do that, you're going to walk away from the grace of God, from His saving power, because you're doing it on your own. And that's what we do. We want to save ourselves from the situation. But if we do it without God, what happens? We're on our own. Don't be like that. Stay with God. Don't leave. Don't abandon ship. Be with God. Be with Him, and He'll see you through. And so what happens? They drop uh, uh, anchor, and so the soldiers cut the ropes, and they held the lifeboat, and let, let, them, let it go. They cut the lifeboat that was there to save them. They couldn't trust that, so they let it go. Before dawn, Paul urged them to, all to eat. Uh, for 14 days, they haven't eaten. And so they, they ate some food. You needed to survive. Not, not one of you will lose a single hair from your head. They said, you're going to survive. You're not even going to get damaged. You're not even going to get a, a, a scratch. Not even a hair will be lost. After he said this, he took bread and gave thanks to God. They prayed during the storm, during this trial. How many times do we pray? Well, when something happens, when we are in trouble, we pray. And so they broke bread and they ate. And what happens, they were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. Verse 37, altogether, there were 276. And so daylight came. What happens? 
They did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach. When they decided to run a ship aground, and they, uh, if they could, cutting loose the anchors, they let them, uh, uh, they let them loose in the, in, the, in the sea. At the same time, they untied the ropes that held the rudders together. They hoisted the foresail of the wind and made for the beach. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow struck fast. It would not move, and the stern was broken into pieces by the pounding of the surf. Now here is a sandbar. They hit it, and it can't move, and here comes the waves crashing up against the ship. You remember, it's made out of wood, and it started uh, uh, splitting up into pieces. What happened? The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners because why? Because they were prisoners. They thought they were going to get ex uh, would escape, but the centurion... The one that loved Paul, I don't know if he loved him, but he, uh, he, he liked Paul. He wanted to spare Paul's life, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks of, or pieces of the ship and that everyone would reach uh, land in, in, in safe, safely. That's, verse, that's chapter 27, right? No one died. Everybody was saved. The ship ran aground, and it broke up into pieces, but not one of them was lost. We have prisoners. We have Roman soldiers. We have those who were shipmates. Imagine that. All spared. There was no one greater, no one lesser. All of them were at the mercy of God. That's the way it is in our day today. We are at the mercy of God. For salvation, we might be seeking, uh, uh, be in trouble, or have a storm, or a trial, or a circumstance we can't defeat. But God is there. It doesn't matter who you are; He's there for all of us. Amen. Now, verse 29, 28, or chapter 28. Once safely on the shore, we found out that the island was called Maltra. The people on the island they came out to meet them. They showed unusual kindness. They caused. Uh, they built a fire because it was cold and it was raining. And so we have Paul, who was gathering pieces of wood for the fire. How many of you have gathered uh, wood for, for a campfire? All of us have done that one time or another. But here we have a snake, a viper, driven out by the heat, fastened itself in the, on the hand of, of Paul. In other words, he wrapped himself up on the hand of Paul, and it bit him. A viper, a poisonous snake. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer, for though he escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. In other words, this guy deserved what he got. He got bitten by a snake because he must have been somebody bad. And what happens? But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. And see, not even a snake could stop Paul, could kill him. Paul had a plan for the life, uh, for his life. God had a plan for the life of Paul. He was going to Rome. And that was a promise. You see what happened here? Paul could have died easily, but no, God saved him. And what happened? The people said, uh, saw in verse 6, the people expected him to swell up and suddenly fall dead. But the wait, after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. They believed he has some supernatural power. He is somebody different. So now we have the storm. We had the leadership of Paul directing the people on the boat, on the ship. They're not going to, don't, to, he was instructing them what to do, and they're all saved. And now we come to this point where miracles begin to happen on this island. Wherever Paul went, he was doing good. He had Christ. He was doing God's will in his life. Paul was a face, faith, face of hope. Why? Because 
He was different. He had no fear. He spoke with calmness, with confidence, with encouragement. In a, in a time of trial, a time of chaos, of, of, of anxiety and stress, we look for somebody that has peace, that has, who is calm, who is confident, and who is encouraging, right? That's the kind of people God wants us to be. You know, when tragedy strikes, how do you react? Do you panic? Are you stressful? Do you have anxiety? Well, yeah, well, to some degree we do, but don't let those things overtake you. Remember what Paul was told by the angel, that he would be with them. God would be with them. And believe me, God is with all of us. He's a loving God. He loves us all. Told him to eat, remember that? Eat your food, you're going to need it to survive. And God supplies all these resources for us. And, and sometimes we're looking for something different, and God says, it's right in your own hand. Eat, so you can be strong. Don't be looking for other places, but look at what the resources you have to defeat the problem you have, the trial, the storm in your life. The shipwreck is uh, happened, it ran aground. It was the aftermath of the storm. It was the result. And what happened is they assessed themselves and said, what, what, what problem do we have now? Well, we're all saved, praise God. We're on an island, but the people here are friendly, unusually kind. They accepted us into their island, all 276 people. And so we see that happening, and God was working in the lives of not only Paul, but the Roman soldiers, those, on the, those other prisoners, but now also on the islanders that were there in Crete, or in, in Malta, I mean. Uh, so what happened? In verse 7, there was an estate nearby, a, a mansion, so to speak, that belonged to Publius, the chief, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home, and for three days he entertained us hospitably. His father was sick in bed. Now we have this chief official, the, the, basically the governor or the mayor of the island. And he had Paul and the people entertain him for three days. Now Paul is a prisoner. He's not being treated with chains or uh, held hostage or anything like that. He was being entertained by who? By the main person on the island. And see, God can work things out. God can make things seem for us in, in our life, it's in, in, our, in the physical sense, it seems so impossible. But with God, he, we, he does the extraordinary. He does the impossible. And so now... He's there on the island. He's there in the, in the estate of the chief official. Find out that his father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went to see him to see what was going on. Now, he was sick with a fever. Dysentery is the inflammation of the intestines. Uh, usually called by bacteria, as a result of food poisoning or water, uh, you became sick, and uh, you, 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 your your intestines begin to swell up. You uh, this is kind of gross, but you have uh, bloody diarrhea. This man was really sick. Dehydration. If he didn't get any help, he would possibly die. Uh, so this man was very sick. Paul went to see him, and after prayer, he placed his hand on him and healed him. He healed a man he'd never seen before through the power of the Holy Spirit that was with Paul. Everyone saw this. Now they saw Paul, who was bitten by a poisonous snake, snake he lived. Now we see him healing the father of 
the chief official of the island. Now what happened? When all this happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They came to Paul, and Paul prayed with them, laid hands, and they were healed of their sickness, of their disease. It says they, uh, they came, all of them, the rest of the sick on that, they came and were cured. He healed them, all of them. He would have thought two weeks earlier, and now two weeks later, Paul's on the island, bitten by a snake, he lived, healing other people. People he didn't even know. God has a plan in our lives. He, what we're going to be doing tomorrow or two weeks from now, no one knows for sure if we won't be here. But God has a plan for us each and every day. Don't submit to the world, but submit to God. Amen? And that's for all of us. Seek God first. Seek Him in everything that you do. In verse 10, they honored us in many ways, and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with all the supplies we needed. God does provide. Now, after they were there, people are, 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 uh, are healed. Imagine the joy that was in that island. And now, all the people, all the prisoners, all the Roman soldiers, and Paul set sail for Rome. How do you think the ship was when they set sail for Rome? The, the atmosphere on that ship must have been pure joy. And see, when you put God first, it's not filled with chaos, greed, envy, jealousy, any of those things. It's filled with love, kindness, joy, peace, and the rest, right? You, you know, that's how it was on that ship. There was probably laughter and praising of God on that ship. And so they set sail. After three months, we were put on the sea, on the, in the sea. They, they, uh, they, they, they went to sea. After three months, uh, a ship that had wintered in the island, it was an Alexandrian ship with a figurehead of twin gods. So now, there was a boat already there, a ship, and uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was there for three months because of the winter. Now it was getting ready to sail. All right. So, verse 13. From there we set sail and arrived in Rigium. The next day the south wind came up, and on the following day we reached Putilioni. There we found some brothers who invited us to spend a week with them, so we came to Rome. He's now in Rome. And so this is very interesting, is now he's getting to the point where he is going to stand before Caesar. And so uh, we continue here, but I want to read something. Uh, he went and met with the Jews. We're not talking about Christian Jews, but the Jews uh, that were uh, you know, Jewish believers. Uh, not so much in, in Christ, not in Christ, but they believed in the old traditions. And so now in verse 17, he says, Three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, Paul said to them, My brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem, handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar. So now they were going to release him, but the Jews would not let that happen. They, they objected. So he says, i got to go to Caesar. And so, uh, not that I had any charge to bring against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk to you. It was because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with these chains. So, here he is, a prisoner still. He wanted to address the Jews there in Rome. In verse 21, the Jew, Jewish leaders replied, 
we have not received any letter from Judea concerning you, and none of, you, none of the brothers who came from there had reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are, for we, we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. This sect is the way. This way is the Jewish believers in Christ. And so now that's what they want to hear. What is this about? And Paul is going to explain to them the gospel. And so in verse 23, imagine all the Jewish uh, 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 people, the leaders were there. Uh, in verse 23, they arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and they came even larger, in larger numbers, to a place where he was staying. And then, from morning till evening, he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and from the prophets. So now he explains who Christ is, the Messiah, the Son of God, who came to save us from our sins who was crucified, who resurrected, and brought life to us. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. So, same thing happens today. You explain to people the plan of salvation who Christ is, they reject it. Some accept it, others reject it. <clears throat> verse 25 they disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made this final statement the Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your forefathers when he said through Isaiah the prophet now he's telling them God spoke to the prophets the prophet spoke to the people of Israel and this is in verse 26, it reads, Go to this people and say, You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's hearts have become callous. They hardly hear with their ears. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. In other words, they reject the gift of salvation. They re uh, reject the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so in verse 28, Therefore, I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will listen. In other words, the Jewish, some believed, others, most of them did not. The Gentiles heard and believed. Some did not, but a lot of them did. And so this tells us that the gospel is not only for the Jews, but for the Gentiles, all of us. The gospel is for us. Just like on that ship, we had prisoners, Romans, and the other ship personnel. All were saved by God. None of them were killed. And you see, God still saves. He's not going to let... The, the evilness of the world kill you, condemn you. We're already condemned, but God made a way, a life preserver for us through Jesus Christ. In verse 30, it says, For two years Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. Boldly, without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, that's the end of the chapter. And you might wonder, what happened to Paul? Uh, after, after he went to, uh, uh, to Rome, what happened? It is believed that Paul was 66 years old when he died. The manner of death is unknown. Most people believe he was beheaded. He was not crucified because he was a Roman citizen. Peter, on the other hand, was crucified because he was not a Roman citizen. Paul 
died almost during the time when Peter also died, was killed. Uh, this was when the uh, Romans began to attack the Christians. Uh, came straight from Rome, came straight from the emperor, from Caesar. And might even be a, a Nero. I want to read Philippians 1, 21 and 24. This is for all of us to, uh, to understand this. Philippians 1. Philippians 1, 21 through 24. And I'll read it. For to me to live is Christ, and to me die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but in the, it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. And so, here he is. He was not afraid to die, but he didn't want to die there because he felt there was so much more for him to do, to preach the gospel, to, uh, to teach others, to, to work, to, uh, to harvest uh, the crop, uh, to, uh, to do labor for God. His desire was to depart, of course, that's far greater than being here. But that was his attitude. He wanted to do much as he could uh, for Christ. Paul laid the foundation for us believers in Christ. Uh, Paul and Peter, along with the other disciples, this is where we find the Holy Spirit where people were being saved and it could not be stopped. They tried to stop it. You can't put chains on Christians and stop the message. No. You, you can try. They tried it. You can try to kill them. But Christianity, by the will of God, was spreading. And here we are today. And so we have the storms. God sees the storms of our lives. The leadership of Paul, he brought encouragement. Uh, he picked up the mantle. Uh, he provided strength and guidance from God. And God saves. Uh, God saved us from, from these people from the storm. He saved them by the leadership of Paul. The shipwreck, the aftermath of the storm, God saved all of them. And so we see this and uh, what do we get from this? And I'm going to go through a list here, and hopefully uh, after that we'll, we'll go ahead and, and dismiss and, and pray. The lessons of Acts 28. People should be, gone, be kind and be helpful. We saw how the people there on Maltra, the islanders, were so kind to the people there. Kindness should be in kind. We should be kind to everyone. Even in life's circumstances, uh, they appear to limit us. We must press on to do whatever we can for God, in spite of our circumstances. Because you're going through a problem, a circumstance in life, don't let that hinder you from doing your best for the Lord. We should be supportive of each other, lifting each other up. Uh, our men... Our, our, our women, our, our youth, we should be supporting each other. Men, uh, uh, be with, uh, in our men's group, that's what we want to instill. Also in the women, is us supporting each other. Uh, hearing our, our needs, hearing our thoughts, hearing our, our, our weaknesses and our strong points. We should be lifting each other up. Uh, and here we have, uh, the people were asking, tell us about, who Christ is. Tell us about this sect. They want to know about Christ. And too many times we're afraid to speak and speak and, and, and talk to God. 
God has the power over all things, including mankind. Uh, the storm was not going to stop God from, from operating. It Does, doesn't matter what you might be going through. God is powerful. God heals. Uh, and we've seen the power of God's healing through Paul. Uh, chains cannot contain the gospel. And of course, we need the spiritual food, and that's through the Word of God. And so I can go on, but I'm going to stop there. Uh, this is what we have in, ver in chapter 28. Go back and read the whole book of Acts. It shouldn't take you uh, more than an hour, hour and a half, if we really concentrate on that. And, and you can, every time, just read. And, and let God speak to you. Meditate upon what you're reading. And, and so we see, what does this have? Apply what you have and apply it to your lives. Uh, you know, in, in the beginning, we have uh, the Great Commission uh, the, for us to uh, uh, be searching, to spread the gospel all over the world. And we see what Paul was going through. He didn't stop till the day he died. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, if you have difficulty or you have a need or anything like that, feel free to text me or, or my number's down there or send me an email. And I'll be more than willing to, to pray with you, whatever you might be going through. And so let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we open up our hearts before you, Lord. We see this, the life of Paul. He wrote most of the New Testament with his letters while in prison. He spoke the truth. He was diligent in what he believed. He didn't waver despite the price it cost him. And God, I pray that our hearts are open to receive the Word of God. Our hearts are open to receive the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you keep us focused upon you, that sin is gone by the stripes for your life that you gave up to us, Father God. You died so I could live in eternity with you. Let me walk in obedience. Let me walk, Father God, in the strength that you give us. Let us not forget what we are in Christ. Let us not walk in defeat, but let us walk in victory. Let us always be searching to do more and more for you. Our hearts should be hungry to learn more about you. Let us read the word. Let us meditate upon it. Let us seek opportunities to help others who are less fortunate. Father God, we have sinned against you. We pray for repentance, for forgiveness. Help us, Father God, for the strength that we need. And God, despite our shortcomings, Father God, you still love us. And God, for that, we're so grateful. Give us the strength to endure, Father God. Lord, we lift up those who are sick. Those who are dealing with the physical need, whether it's diabetes, cancer, heart disease, lung disease, whatever it might be. Father God, I pray, Lord, for healing. For those who are dealing with broken relationships, those dealing with the unknown, the fear, the anxiety, what's going to happen tomorrow. Those who have fear of the trials they're going through, of the storms they're, they're seeing. Father God, I pray for peace. And Lord, the promise that you would never leave us. Let us humble ourselves before you. Let you lead our lives, Father God. And God, as we close out, we're just so grateful that you have blessed us, Father God. Thank you for our churches, Father God. Be with CBC and HCBC, Father God. Let us grow, Father God. Let us spread the gospel to those who are hurting, those who are living in darkness, those who have no hope. Father God, let us help them. 
Lead the way, Father God, for them. God, I pray that we avail ourselves. Make us uh, responsible, Father. And let we become responsible for those. Our hearts are convicted for those who are lost, those who are seeking, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, for the love that you show us, the love and the understanding and the care, the compassion that you have. We thank you, Lord. Be with us the remainder of this week and for Sunday as we go and to our worship services, Father God. During this Christmas season, Father God, I pray, Lord, that we remember why you came to earth. You came as our Savior, as our Messiah. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with us. Uh, next week we're going to go into the Christmas season. We're going to have a Christmas Bible study for the next couple of weeks. And more details will follow. God bless you wherever you are. And whatever you're doing, God loves you. Amen. <laughs>